holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all my iniquities, and who heals all my diseases, who redeems my life from destruction, who crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies my soul. Move forward. <laughs> who cram okay, who satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. We're getting close. We've almost got it memorized. We're getting there. Father, we just give you all glory and praise and honor. We thank you, Father, for tonight. Um, for Father, we're stepping into... Um, Lord, the things that you want to say to us. And Lord, we're learning how to hear from the voice of God. And Father, we ask you to teach us tonight. I thank you, Father, for Mike. We pray, Lord, that you will bless him, that you'll, the anointing of the Holy Spirit will fall fresh in this place. Let's just wait. Put your hands out. Let's just wait. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that's here now. Bring in your presence. We invite your presence. Thank you, Lord. We give you all glory and all praise. You know, like we want to align up. So let's just speak in tongues for about 30 seconds. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're so good to us. You're so good to us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Now, Father, bring your word like you do. We love how you do it. And, Father, we just thank you right now in advance for what you're going to do tonight. We ask, Lord, that you fill us fresh with the baptism of fire. Stir up the spirit within us so that we can hear your voice clearly and accurately, Lord, in Jesus' holy name. We just give you all glory and praise in advance in Jesus' name. We love you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We just praise your name. Thank you, Lord. Holy 
Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, bless the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Oh, 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 oh. 
you help us to recognize how holy you are. And Lord, let us not compromise who you are. And Lord, we ask that we not be the ones who compromise your name. In Jesus' name, we ask. Father, we put glory in you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you all glory and all praise and all honor. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Glory, glory. I feel like we should wait just a little bit. I saw like um, like an ephod, which is like the 12 stones. I just saw it come down in this place. And I just sense that it's a honoring of the Holy Spirit. Let's mm -hmm. go on at the Holy Spirit tonight. We, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Oh, you're right. I guess I should talk in the mic. But, Father, we just thank you tonight. We give you all glory and all pro honor. All glory and all honor. We honor you who is holy above all. You're the only, in fact, the word says you are the only one who is holy. So, Lord, right now we say we lift you high in your holiness. We lift you higher. We magnify your name in your holy name. We magnify your holy name. Holiness befits your name, my God, forevermore. Holiness befits your name, my God. Forevermore. There's only one who is holy, and it is you, Lord. Just close your eyes and ask the Lord to show you a picture even right now. Father, we, we agree with you. We agree with who you are. We agree that you are the Holy One who rules and reigns over the entire earth, and you rule over my life. Rule over my life tonight. Thank you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, who is to come. Boy, y'all are quiet tonight. <laughs> You're holy. Come on, let's just lift our name. You're to tip his name. Lift up your voice. We say you're holy tonight. You're holy. You are the only God. You are the only God. You're the one true God. We say your name is only lifted high. We say yes and amen to the Holy One. The Holy One. We lift your name high. We lift your name high. Your name high. Magnify your name. We magnify your name. We magnify your name. David said, come with me. Let us magnify his name together. We, it is good to be in the house of the Lord and to lift up your name. Lord, you are the one true God. We love you, Lord. We bless you. We say you are the one. You are the one that we worship, the one that we adore. We adore you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. High and lift it up. Broko shuriandari aiki on broka shariandari aiki. Oriandari aiki on broko shuriandari aiki. Glory to the one true God. Glory to the one true God. Oriandari aiki on broko shuriandari aiki on broka shariandari aiki. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just saw, I just saw this uh, dove just flying, <laughs> just flying in here. So, Father, we just invite that precious peace, that, what is that, shalom dove? <laughs> that dove that remember when Jesus was baptized in water and he came up and that dove came right over him? And that, and we even think about Noah and the dove going out from the ark. So, Father, right now that dove, that Holy Spirit is welcome here. Lord, we say you are welcome here. Thank you, Lord. Come. Rest here in this place. This is your dwelling place. This is your place of rest. Will you find a place here and rest among us? In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I saw a picture of a very small human being and a very large giant. Mm -hmm. And the human being just punched the giant in the knee or <laughs> in the shin, and the giant went over. Wow, that's good. Praise the Lord. We say yes. So think, I want you to think about the biggest difficulty in your life right now, and that's your giant. 
and just say, I'm looking at your shin right now, and I just say, Holy Spirit, help me. Give me the boldness and the strength, and Lord, I know it's not by might, not by power, but it's by your spirit that those giants come down. It's by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else see a picture? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. I saw people uh, lining up, like a multitude of people, and everybody was holding a stone that was on fire. Mm. And you're talking about ephod, mm. and it's like people... God's building the kingdom yes. with living stones. Amen. And everybody was carrying their living stone with them. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Broko shuri andari aiki ombri onko shuri andari aiki. Praise the Lord. Kore andari aiki. Yes. <laughs> well. I don't know what this has to do with anything, but I saw a boat, and it was like a, um, a wooden boat, maybe a smaller than a fishing boat, like a passenger boat, and I heard God who sees, Adonai Roy, oh, wow. I believe. Yes. Yeah. So wow. I, whatever that means. Yes, the God who sees. Amen. <laughs> Nothing is not seen by the one true God, right? Every, he sees everything. He doesn't forget anything. He sees it all, except our sin. Thank God. <laughs> Praise you, Father. Thank Praise you, Lord. You. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Praise your name. The boat um, would be traveling instead of people coming to the God who sees he travels around and he sees us. Oh, that's good. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anyone else? Any more pictures? Good to see all of you. <laughs> Any other pictures tonight? Praise the Lord. I know we'll have more before the night's over. We just want to want the Lord to stir up the spirit within us right at the beginning, right? <laughs> so that we're... We're in tune, and we're ready to hear what the Lord would say to us tonight. I'm going to do it one more time. Just put your hands out. Close your eyes. Let's just ask the Holy Spirit, speak to me tonight. He may just give you personally a word, a picture. And just hold on to it. But if he gives you something that you want to share, just lift, up, lift your hand. So, Father, we just thank you for the, your Holy Spirit that speaks to us. And we ask you, God, we want to be the ones who hear you, Lord. Help us hear your voice. I heard the word and saw the the picture of chiclets, the uh -huh. the little gum things that yes. the kids sell Teeny when you're tiny. in Mexico. Yes, chiclets, chiclets. I haven't a clue what that means. <laughs> chiclets. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Well, we are kind of like little chicklets. <laughs> We're little chickies running around. <laughs> mm. We're little peeps. <laughs> We're little peeps, yes, uh, right beside you. Um, this was yesterday in my quiet time with the Lord, and I was reluctant to, because I hadn't processed it, so I'll let you guys. But I think in the reconciling of, you know, grace and faith, you know, by works that, uh, you know, remember where when a chick is being born, if you help it out of the shell, it will die. Right. And so, like in, I think it reconciled for me that the Lord, it's by his spirit, by his power and might, not by ours. Right. But if we don't fight our way out of the shell between our ears, we'll die spiritually. That's right, Don. That's a good word. That's a good word, Don. That's good. Anyone else? Praise the Lord. All right, brother, come on. We've got a, we got a, we got a man, a, a prophetic man tonight that's going to teach us, and I'm excited about it. Mike, I've known Mike for a long time. I don't know how long. I don't know how long I've known you. 
But I, know, I, I, 20 years. It probably, it's been a long time. You're exactly <laughs> right. Probably you went to classes here, right? Yeah. In the, in, yeah. the, in the house. That would have been from 2000, 2000 on. So here it is, 2024. Boy, that dates all of us, doesn't it? <laughs> oh my goodness. So, but praise the Lord. Um, and I want to just honor you and welcome you here tonight. And we just pray this is the first of many. And we're excited to hear what the Lord has given you. And um, if you don't have notes yet, we do have notes in the back. I think, did I leave them back there? I hope. I'll find them if I lost them because <laughs> I'm good at losing the notes. But um, if you don't have notes, just put your hand up and we'll get you some notes. And um, we're just looking forward to this. And we will, um, I'm just going to turn it over right now. Uh, let me just pray for you, brother. Father, I just welcome, uh, I'm, oh boy, I just remembered a dream. Okay, long time ago, <laughs> when I reached out my hand, I remembered this dream. So um, a long time ago, I dreamed, um, and it was probably 20, um, seven, 2007, so 2007, 2008, 2009, somewhere right in there, um, I dreamed that I put out my hand, um, Bob Jones, I saw Bob Jones in my dream, the prophet Bob Jones, and I said, I reached out my hand and I said, Bob Jones, would you come to Golden? And at the time, I wasn't even in Golden. Isn't that interesting? Um, no, because we were over at the other place, so it would have been nine, ten, somewhere about 2010. Reached out my hand and I said, would you come to Golden? That's so wild because I wasn't in Golden at the time and I thought, <laughs> why did I invite him to Golden? I'm not in Golden. <laughs> anyway. And um, he said yes. And I was so taken aback by that dream that I actually went um, because there was a conference that he was going to be at, Kathy Walters, and it was in Alabama or Georgia, Birmingham, Alabama. It was in Alabama. And um, I went out there to that, that Kathy Walters conference, and Bob Jones was there, and I actually chased him out, <laughs> not, not crazy or anything, but I just walked out behind him when he was leaving after a service, and I said, Bob, I said, would you come to Golden? And his dear wife, Bonnie, who I love, was there, and he said, I can only do what the Holy Spirit tells me to do, and I said, that's good with me, but I was so, and he died shortly after. But I knew it, was, it, it wasn't necessarily that him per, in person would come, but it was me inviting the, Holy, the, the word of the, or the prophetic gifting to come to Golden before we were actually a church. Isn't that good? So um, the yes is in my heart. <laughs> so, Father, right now tonight, we invite the prophetic to Golden. We invite the prophetic into dwelling place. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. We thank you, Lord, because we see that um, you see the future, and we look much better than we look right now. <laughs> we look better in the future because we're going to be trained, and you're going to teach us what you want us to know and teach us how to operate in the prophetic gift at a higher level than we're already at. So, Lord, we give you glory. We, um, I just want everyone, just put your hands on your heart. We give you permission to work in our hearts tonight. Give us a tender heart. Help us to learn some of you may feel like I don't hear from the Lord. Some may, some may feel like, oh, this isn't for me. Listen, put your hand on your heart and just say, Jesus, however you want to talk to me, I'm good with. The yes is in my heart, just like we say for fire camp. Yes, okie dokie. Yes, sir. Yeah, sure. You <laughs> however you want to talk to me, I say yes. I want to hear from heaven. I want to hear what you have to say. More so now than I ever have in my life. Jesus, I ask you to speak to me. And I want to hear your voice. Now, Lord, I bless Mike. I bless the anointing upon his life, the gifting upon his life. And I ask, Father, for a heavy and strong anointing tonight as he begins to teach. Not only for him, but for everyone in this room. In my, myself, I, Lord, I ask for a heavy anointing in my heart. That I will hear your voice. That I will listen and I will learn tonight. That, my, that I can humbly hear from heaven and you can change my heart tonight. So I ask in Jesus' name that you will move up across this place. Just like that, that dove going back and forth in here. I just ask, Lord, that you move by your Holy Spirit back and forth across this room. May we hear, may we listen, and may the gentleness of the 
the wings of double of the dove just just brush across us tonight may we just have such peace in our hearts about how you're going to speak to us and we just give you glory in advance for what you're doing tonight in Jesus holy name thank you brother Amen. it's all yours you know this on, or would just be better speak on that for now because i think this one's really big i'm just going to oh. take it and you take okay. it okay all right Good morning, everybody. <laughs> um, we've, got, we've got notes on the stage, on the, on the screen, and you all have But it's um, hearing from, from, from God. Um, we, talked, we, we sang about the holiness of God. And the holiness of God is because he's the creator. There isn't anybody who is equal to him. And who are we as a creation to even be able to talk to him or to come in his presence? But it's because of his love. And that is what makes his love astonishing and astounding and amazing because he went to a lot of trouble to get it to this point to where we can stand in his presence or, or we can speak with him and know that he hears our prayers and that he does answer. So um, a lot of what I have is, comes from um, Mark and Patty Verkler's uh, communion with God. If anybody wants a copy, it's out of print, but if you talk to Stephanie, we can arrange something. I have a newer version. Oh, do you? Yeah. I think what happened was he split it into three different books. And, and um, anyway, it's very good. A lot of practical stuff in there, which we're going to get into. And this is going to be the first of several, we think. We'll see how it works. So, um, I always approach the prophetic as prayer. And, um, you know, if I'm going to give a word to somebody, I say, I want to pray for you and see what God tells me. So that means I have to be able to hear his voice, and I have to be assured that what I'm hearing is his voice. So the essence of prayer is prayer is a dialogue. And we're mostly taught that prayer is, well, we get quiet before God, and we ask him, and we tell him, and, and then we're done. But there's two parts to dialogue. God speaks back to us, and we have to be able to be still long enough to take time for the other person to, to do the speaking. So prayer is not doing something, which is a lot of what we're taught in our Western church, but it's being with somebody until I become one with him, until I become the expression of Jesus, so that when people see me, they know I've been talking to them. Think of Moses. They knew that he had been in God's presence. They could just see it on him. And um, as believers, we sort of strive towards that too. We actually kind of have that ability that people see us, they should know. So, Verkler says, I can experience God through spiritual experiences rather than a dry monologue of just prayer. Simple prayer is, God, forgive me for this and give, give this to me because this is what I really need or this is what I'm concerned about. Um, those, there's nothing wrong with that. But we have that there's more. There's so much more than just that. He wants to, us to talk to him, and he wants to know what's on our heart. He knows already, but he wants us to express it to him. But the other part is sometimes we're done with that, and we walk away. And so often we don't hear. I've, I think God speaks to us all the time. And we don't listen. We don't know how to listen. We don't know that we have permission to listen, that maybe you can only do it in a church or with a, a pastor or somebody, and we don't know how to listen. But you do have permission. And the scripture says over and over again, God talks to us. And so the essence of prayer is my love relationship with the King of Kings rather than going to him to get things. And a lot of times we don't listen when God's talking to us because it's, oh, not now, God, I'm busy. I'll get back with you on that. And, and that's, that, especially in our Western culture, is there's always some distraction or something that seemingly more important. So, and that's sad, but that's the way we are. It's, it's a hard thing to overcome, but that's something to strive for. 
So the principles from the Bible that relate to prayer and the spiritual realm provide the direction as I travel on the spiritual road. So that is our kind of our road map in a way to see as we live our life, am I, am I on the map? Am I deviating from a path that, that I should stay on? The Holy Spirit will mold my prayer life. So instead of taking the principles of prayer that God has shown me and turn it into this is our prayer time, this is our worship time, this is our listening to preaching time, it makes it all uh, um, not a legalistic thing but uh, an experience. Spirit-born specific action and power flow is a natural result of my love relationship. Notice how many times we talk about the love relationship. This is your lover. We are privileged to be able to see him as a friend and to see him as our lover rather than that old guy that sits on the throne and looks over the balcony and says, ha ha, Stephanie went that way and wanted her to go to that way. We'll see if she gets it right next time. That's not who God is. <laughs> God says, come to me and sit with me and be with me. Okay, so what is prayer? Prayer is two lovers sharing love together. You go back to the Garden of Eden and see how God walked and talked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day and realize that God is described as manifesting incomprehensible love. So then we begin to realize that our sharing with him is the communion of two lovers. Think of Think of that, Adam in the garden with God every day. It was a daily thing. It wasn't like once a week or once a month. God was there in person every day. After the fall, that changed a little bit. I wonder if Adam was jealous when Enoch, one of his grandchildren, had that kind of a relationship with God so much that God took him back to the heavenly garden. Okay, so you can find many examples of these things in the Psalms. So therefore, when we pray, we are coming to Jesus, our friend. Jesus says, no longer do, you call, do I call you servants. I now call you friends. That's in John 15, 15. So we're building a friendship relationship together. And Verkler lists these following steps for how um, we become friends with somebody. First, it's the casual stage, so I speak of the world outside me. Get together with your pals and you say, oh, did you see the Broncos game? Or, you know, whatever it happens to be. So then, you, when you get to a beginning trust, you start to tell people, your friends, a little bit about yourself. How do you feel? And your deep trust is the third level, and now you're really sharing some deep things within you that who you are. And you get to that trust because um, a lot of times we're afraid to go to that trust because we're afraid that somebody will think of us if we tell our deepest secret. God knows all of those secrets already, but he wants us to acknowledge that to him and to, to listen to what he has to say to us. And that takes us right to the intimacy. Um, Christine said something earlier when she came in that a lot of times communion with God is just sitting there and just listening because sometimes there are no words to express. Sometimes he gives us what we need to know in some kind of a feeling. Sometimes he whispers words in our ears. Sometimes he shows us a picture of, of something. Um, but a lot of times there are just no words to express what he... That's why... We use the Holy Spirit speaks for us with utterings and groanings that we don't know, but he can speak those words that we don't know. It's amazing how we don't know ourselves. So then as you get to that point, you kind of become in a, in a union to where we're, we really are one with God. He knows our hearts but what we want is for him to share more and more of his heart with us so that when we think of things or we go about our business, we can see it the way he sees it. It's a little hard to do in our culture. It takes a little work. You know, um, I've discovered over the years that uh, being a Christian takes a little bit of effort. 
It'd be nice if all you just said, say the prayer and get saved, and that's the end of it. Go all about your business, except on Sunday you go to church and you feel good about yourself. But being, being um, really true to, to what God has done for us takes a little bit of effort. And we go through seasons. Sometimes I'm more willing to give the effort than others. I think everybody does that. But So then um, we talked about having permission to hear from God, and that's um, the authority. So the Bible says we submit to our, uh, ourselves to one another, and it's obey leaders and submit to them, for they watch over your soul as those who will give account. Let them do this with joy and not grief, for this would be unprofitable to you. So um, the authority in this case is when we're practicing the prophetic, is this is going to be a safe place. Um, you can make mistakes here. You can bring your journaling, which we'll talk about in a moment, and ask somebody who maybe is more experienced, or Stephanie, or, or Bill, or anybody, even a friend who's here, learning the same thing. I always say that, that when we're born, we have two legs, but do we know how to walk? We have to learn. And sometimes we fall. <laughs> even when we get old, we fall. <laughs> So um, that is where the authority comes to because it makes sure that what we are hearing from God, especially when we're learning, is really his voice. Okay, uh, let me go on. I'm going to go on to the next thing here. How about somebody look up Acts 19, verse 15 and 7, 15 through 17. I don't know how many are familiar with what this is, what this is about, but... You don't want to have this kind of an experience when you're learning the prophetic. So this is why I put this in here. Remember that um, our contract in the prophetic and in our salvation is with God. It's not with man. We want to make sure that we're hearing from God and that we're not um, doing something or saying something to please man. You have it? Go ahead. Oops, C microphone coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 15 through 19? Uh, 15 through 17. It's chapter 19. 17. Chapter 19. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know you. And Paul, I know you. But who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leapt on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. This became known to all, all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell upon them, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. So that's an experience that when we're, when we're speaking prophetically or ministering to somebody, we don't want to have. I don't want to pray for somebody and have some spirit say, well, who are you? I want to make sure that they know who I am because I know where my authority lies and where my contract is, and that's with, that's with Jesus. So when we're going to do, we're, this is all kind of leading up to um, starting some prophetic teams here, prophetic ministry, um, Stephanie's goal. So this is sort of the laying some of the groundwork here, and uh, that's where the spiritual covering comes. And dwelling place will develop what kind of protocols or rules we'll do when we do our prophetic ministry. And so when we're under this covering, we need to make sure that we follow what those come. And we're not talking about those tonight because she's still developing those. But it comes back to what I said earlier about being able to um, test what you think you're hearing from God amongst us so that, so that you don't stray off. When, um, when you touch the spirit realm, the spirit realm is very real. When you touch that, you can hear three different voices. You can hear God's voice, you can hear your own voice, or you can hear the unmentionable one. Um, and it's important to be able to know which is which. And sometimes when we're just learning, we don't always know how to distinguish that. 
and jumping way ahead the way the, the way is, is if you're praying for something, first of all, if you ask God, that's the voice you're going to hear from her. But if you're praying about a situation and your eyes are on the situation, you're probably going to hear an answer that's you because you're going to want to help it out. And so you need to put your eyes on Jesus when you're praying about the situation and be able to set that aside, tell him what it is, and that you want to hear from him. Okay, so we'll come back to where we were here. Uh, Habakkuk 2, 1 and 2, and I have them set out here as I will stand on my guard post and I will keep watch and see what he will speak to me. Then the Lord said, record the vision. So if we use this as our base, we have a quiet place that we go in our mind. Maybe it's a favorite chair in your house. Maybe it's a park, you know, wherever it is that you go where you're not distracted and you're comfortable. And that's your quiet place to hear from God. And then when you pray, you look for the vision. Look for him to show you something, which means you have to ask. He doesn't, I always used to think that, well, if God talked to me, it was because he threw a lightning bolt first. And there's this scorch mark, and that's how I know it's from God. But that's not how, he, that's not how it works. He's, uh, un- unless you're that one, that one false prophet where the donkey talked to him. <laughs> Balaam, okay, now he was touching the spirit realm, but he was trying to put himself in it to please man. And when it came down to it, he knew he couldn't say anything that, except what God told him. But unfortunately for him, the donkey had to tell him that. Okay, so then we learn to recognize God's voice as a flow of spontaneous thoughts. And this is why we go down to record this in your journal. And some people are good at journaling. I had a a married couple friends where um, Sharon had her journals categorized and organized and everything was there. And her husband, Bill, had scraps of paper all around the house. (laughs) I go through seasons with journals. I have a whole bunch that have started but not too consistent all the way through. Um, But it is interesting when you write the things down, then you can go back and you can test whether it is from from God. Um, So we skip down here to see. You see, journaling is the best way to recognize God's voice speaking to you. And you want to try to prove your writing correct. And that is when you look for the scripture to find some scripture that proves it correct rather than disprove. We want to go with a positive approach and not a negative approach because I think it's pretty easy to do the negative. So when you think you're hearing from God, and when you start to, you ask him a question, you say, okay, I'm going to write down. You write down what just flows spontaneously. Don't try to figure it out. Just write it all down. You can go back and look at it later. And you can test it and you'll say, oh, well, that was silly. That's not God or, you know, whatever it turns out to be. Um, But that's the whole purpose of journaling, especially in the beginning, because then you start to know whether that voice you heard was God or whether it was me or something else. Um, So uh, going back up here to um, letter B is that you also have to make up your mind that if you're going to ask God to talk to you, you have to be willing to trust and believe that he will. And so if you come to him and say, well, God, I don't know if you're going to do this or not, but, you know, let's, let's, you know, wake me up. If you get there again, that's the lightning bolt thing. And, and so I say, okay, God, you said that if I talk to you, you'll speak back with me. And so I'm going to trust that you're going to do it. You have to make up your mind that you're going to go that way because the left brain, which does the logical, and, of course, the enemy will also try say, no, that can't possibly be God because, you know, um, you were a little slow getting through that red light or you didn't stop completely at the sign or you thought a terrible thing about somebody earlier today and you can't possibly be hearing from God because you're not holy. Well, he gave us all the righteousness we're going to get. We don't become more righteous When you are saved, you have all the righteousness. What you learn to do is to walk more fully in it. What? 
what am I? Oh, yeah, yeah. About journaling. <laughs> um, so I have found that if I'm journaling or if I don't have anything, if I don't have anything, I'm, I'll be sitting there and it's just nothing. Just start writing scripture. Just start journaling the word. And the Lord will open up things, and you'll just go, and it'll just like turns on a fire hose. Um, I've had that happen several times, and I've also had the Lord prove himself through his word in that journaling. Shocked me. And so um, don't just expect you're just going to have a whole lot of things to say, you know, through, through journaling all the time, because sometimes you're just blank as blank as anything. But if you give it a shot give it practice, it will happen. And it, it actually opens up a whole new thing. I, I think I have, I have where I have started right. I've written out like the book of Hebrews. And what have you been writing out, Sandra? Are you still journaling something? I know she wrote the book of John, right? Yeah. Book of John was the last thing I know. And Revelation. She finishes. See, I do the same thing. I don't finish. <laughs> I, I get started, and I was writing out the whole book of Psalms, and I, no, I didn't get it done. But it's powerful what happens. So I just want to encourage you not just to think that every time you sit down, you have to fill a page. That's not it. Um, and when you ask, the Lord might say things that, that you'll go, well, I don't know if that's, Lord, I don't know if that's you, but would you prove yourself in this word? Because I've had, I've had times where he said something, and I thought, that's impossible. That ain't going to happen. And I'll say, well, Lord, so this is my, my way of doing it. Lord, if this is you, you prove this word. What were you going to say, Joseph? I write down prayers, a lot of prayers. That's exactly right. That's what I like to do. And I, do I, I do a lot of other stuff, too, but a lot of prayers. and That's what I like to write down and what's on my mind to God, you know. That's good. And then you write down what he answers? Yeah. Try that. I always memorize it when he answers to me. You, you try that. If you write down your prayer and then, late, and then say, okay, I want you to give me the answer here and see what he says. Don't ask him yes and no questions. That's really, really hard. I don't. I don't. Prophetic do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, so spiritual encounter is normal for Christians, and it's not a one-way thing. It we see we see both things happen. So Christianity goes beyond this simple code of ethics. Um, haven't we tried that before? I always say this. Well, just give me a list. Oh, yeah, they did that. The Jewish people did that. The Catholics do that. A lot of Protestant churches do that too. Here's your list. If you do these things, you'll be fine. But that's not what, that's not what being a friend. Try to do that with a friend. You make a list of what you want me to be in. I'll make one for you. and <laughs> We'll know whether we're friends or not. <laughs> okay, so... Um, our experience here is heart to heart, God's heart to our heart, rather than our logic. Uh, I didn't even bring my Bible with me, but um, the Bible is the logos. That's the written word. That's the left brain. That's the part that we use to compare to. Um, what God tells you in your heart or what he shows you in any kind of a picture will not contradict anything that's in the scripture. That's why we prove it by trying to prove it correct. And as a while, after a while, you get to understand what that voice sounds like in your, in your mind. And even after that, after years, you still have times where we stumble a little bit. And that's why there's the safety in numbers, so to speak. Uh, also, when we're talking about prophetic ministry here, we're not talking about it in terms of the office of prophet. This would all be basic to that, but that's not the level we're going to go to. Now, if you, you know, once we excel in all of our prophetic, if that's what God calls you, then you go through it, but you'll know. You'll know that God's called you to such. So we come to know truth in our hearts and spirits rather than our minds. God reveals things that our natural eyes and ears could never sense through his spirit. Uh, I mean, through his spirit speaking directly to ours are the things. That otherwise, we see only natural eyes, ears, and our mind. We don't have any, that doesn't have any place in God's revelation like Stephanie said. She writes it down and says, oh, that's impossible. Well, that's because she's looking at it through her eyes and through her mind. 
and nothing is impossible to God. Um, I wrote at the top of, of each of these pages that prophecy is 80% preparation, 20% 20 20 inspiration, 100% perspiration, 1,000% trepidation and anxiety, which is kind of true. The deeper you get into it, you'll see the preparation is knowing the scripture, knowing your way around the scripture, because um, the Holy Spirit can't bring it to my mind unless I've read it. If I, if I haven't read it or maybe studied it, um, you know, he can't bring it to my mind. So, I'm sorry? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you'll see something different every time. And that is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. He says, hey, I've read this four times. I've never seen this particular thing. All right. Let's go on to the next page here. And um, just wanted to note that, um, what? Oh, 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 yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't well, see. The, the trepidation anxiety, I can sure relate to that. <laughs> and I thought, well, it doesn't seem like it should be that way, but then is it like a humility of, oh Lord, I don't want to mess up. That's part of, that's part of it. And it's also recognizing that we are people, and um, we are human, and we let the Spirit speak through us, but it's going to be filtered through our experiences. And, and you know, what words come out are going to be relative to, to us, and that's why there's the, the, the trepidation and anxiety is how much of me is in it and how much of him is in it. So my thought is, too, on this, I'm sorry, I, no, I've go got ahead. some thoughts, though. But, you know, I did not realize when I became a pastor that I would have a different level of what I called stress mm -hmm. when this whole thing started. Yeah. And I did not, I just didn't count on that. I just thought, oh, this is going to be. But I, I count it to that because you are, you're, you're seeking the Lord in a different way. In, and you are you're pressing in, and it's not it's not anxiety like um, fear uh, you know fear and anxiety or the thing that brings you down. It's just a different type of I'm pressing in hard, Lord, and I expect to hear, and you're on you're on guard to hear yes. in a different way. Exactly. And I think that's what we're because that's when right. you're going to prophesy to somebody, you're going to give somebody a word. You, boy, you want it. You want to hit it. You want to nail it. You don't want to just give them some flimsy thing and, or, or miss it, which yes. would even be worse. Yes. So you want to have a certain amount of the right kind of, um, I, I call it, we don't have a good word for it. No, it's like respect almost. There you go. There a respect go. that, that uh, okay, God, I'm going to step out and speak believing that it's you, but I'm not going to take credit for it as coming from me, but you're all, we're, we're so eager to get in and do God's work our way and help him out. Go ahead. The, or a phrase that came to mind was that, um, that reverential trembling at his word, that, that yes. this is sacred. Yes. And, and we're a flawed human. But anyway. <laughs> the fear of the Lord. All right, we got another one over here. <clears throat> I was just going to say, it's a fear of the Lord, <laughs> yeah. intertwined yeah. with something that you're going to do. There's the fear of the Lord involved in that. N not where you're fearing God, but there's, yeah, a reverential fear of the Lord. I, I, the, the fear in the sense of reverence. Right, and, and that this is, this is a big deal. <laughs> this yeah, is, so. it, it's a big deal, so that's why... In all talking about God's love and his speaking to us, we remember that he's holy. That's right. And he is so far apart from us because he's our creator. And that's where the trepidation, trepidation and the reverence and the fear and the anxiety, like, who am I to speak for God? Right. Right. 
I fear God all the way around. I mean, just the scared of him and just uh, everything, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's a good place to be. It is. <laughs> in other words, I'm not going to come in and just do whatever I flippantly want to. Yeah. And, and, and that is what we want to do the opposite. Which is, as you said, as being a pastor, it's easy to come in here and perform. You know, like a musician would come in and perform instead of worshiping. Uh, you could come in and, and preach your word, and it would be performance rather than sharing what God wants you to share to everybody. And that's what's, that's what's really hard. I think that's hard in our, in our um, North American culture. I agree. And I think that's the challenge. I think it's a challenge. So you can add challenge in on that because it is a challenge <laughs> because you don't want to fall into that. It's exactly. Easy. Yeah, you don't want to fall into that. <laughs> Right, so 49% of the New Testament references are for spiritual, non-rational experiences. So that's half. That's half. That's a lot. If you were to deny God's um, supernatural, you'd throw away half the Bible, or half, the, half of the New Testament anyway. Okay, so our picture here is showing the, the difference between the mind and the spirit. So the rationalist... Uh, has to dethrone the mind. This is where the mind says, well, this can't be God because it doesn't make any sense, or that would be impossible. And this, the heart is where the spirit should come out, and, and that's where we believe. That's where we, where we believe and, we, and, and how we are able to receive salvation is through the heart, because you can't argue it logically. Well, you can, but it's not going to win very far because you've got to get down to here. Have you ever read any of Francis Schaeffer? That takes a little doing. This guy, I don't think he's alive anymore, but, but he, um, he was like a philosopher, but he was Christian. And he could tell you about Christianity on a philosophical level. And reading his works is so difficult because you're going along, it takes you about two chapters before you get into the rhythm of, of his words. He uses big words, and then he uses a parenthesis. Right. And f six or seven pages later, he closes that parenthesis. <laughs> and I think, what were we talking about? <laughs> it's, it's hard, isn't it? <laughs> so the next picture we have going on down there is... The difference between a world view and a spiritual view. On, on this far side over here, where it's just a square, that's where most of the world is. And, and this, is, this is us, this is our world, and this is how we relate to our world, only in those five sentences. This, this line, I couldn't get it erased, so just forget that line. But... This is when we have the spiritual uh, view. We have God, we have the spiritual, we have the physical world, and we still touch it with our senses, but there's this whole inner part of us, our heart, where we hear from God, we hear from ourselves, and we hear from, from, this, from this thing, but um, this is so much more well-rounded, that's what God wants us to be. He wants us to be complete. And that's one of the things when you see people who aren't believers, they're, they're trapped in that, in just that physical. There's nothing beyond it. Why, do I, why am I even alive? There's nothing that comes after. Nothing that came before. What's the whole purpose? So that's what we need to be able to pay attention to when we're, when we're trying to hear from God is that there's this, whole well-rounded thing and the spiritual world is more real than the natural world actually we just can't see it right. yet <laughs> we catch glimpses every now and then that is the holy spirit he gives you revelations to just go back to what you said about you wrote something down and you said oh that can't be true well see that's the inner part Seeing that, hi. <laughs> oh, he's having a good game.
So, oh, yeah. Our inner is the, our inner man. Yes. And how we're, repre- how we're seeing it versus okay, because, our physical. Because God speaks, God can speak to us uh, on the outer things here as well. But mostly he wants to communicate with the heart of who we are. And so this is where our inner ear hears his word. Our inner eye sees visions. Our inner emotion all, and our inner will, this is one's important too, because um, that will is, is what we have to give over to him in order to experience all the rest of it. Our will gets in the way too often. It's not now, God, I, I'm busy, is what happens. And we do that without even consciously saying it. And there's emotion. Remember, God created us in his image, which means we have free will, we have emotion. You know, God can laugh. God can have fun. We can have fun. That's not a problem. And he can feel sad. Um, I always think how big God's love is that of all the people on the earth who have ever lived, even those before the flood, the Bible says that God loves everybody. And he loves them unconditionally. But in order for him to fellowship God to fellowship with us, we have to have some responsibility in there. So what happens to all the people who have ever lived who are not believers and don't know him and don't go to heaven? I think God's a God of a broken heart because he loves them so much and they don't know it. And they turn around and they, they, it's not, um, not now God I'm busy. It's just, I don't even want to know you. And, and it's just beyond me to consider how, how much that hurts God and how much more joyful he is when, we ha- when, when one of us comes to him and says, God, I'm feeling sad about this. Or, God, I'm not happy with you at the moment. That's, that's, that's fine, too, because, um, you know, God created us with all of these feelings and emotions and and he just wants to be able to speak to us. So we have to surrender our will and let him talk to us. Who works, but the, we know the first word is God who works in you both to will yes. and to do of yes. his good. That's right. That's right. That's right. It goes back to what I said earlier. It takes some effort. If he just created us so that we were all just perfect and we didn't have any effort, that's not in his image if we didn't have any choice. That's right. right. What a good God. All right, last thing for today. Well, almost the last thing. The penultimate thing. Um, This quote from J. Sidlow Baxter is really good. He's in this particular section, he's talking about Leviticus and um, the priest and, and their duties is how clearly we need to grasp the, dis, the difference as illustrated in this section between our standing and our state as Lord's priest. And you understand that we are God's priests because we represent him. All the sons of Aaron, whether old or young, defective or normal, were priests to Jehovah. By virtue of their birth and life relationship with Aaron is why they were, they were priests. Well, we have that same thing by, uh, by Jesus, by, be, by becoming one with him and having him live in our heart. Nothing could break that relationship, yet those among them who were physically defective were not allowed to officiate at the altar or enter within the veil of the sanctuary, and those who were in any way defiled were not even allowed to eat of the priest's portion. So he's saying that just because they were born the sons of Aaron and they were in the priestly line doesn't mean that they were qualified to minister, to be within the veil always is speaking of ministering God's word or, or in our case, the prophetic as we minister to other people. So he says, even so, every true believer is a priest 
by virtue of life-giving union with the Lord Jesus. And nothing can break that union where it really exists. But all Christians do not enjoy the same intimacy of fellowship or exercise the same ministry within the veil. So maybe it's a, um, a little more intimate relationship with a pastor and, and Jesus or with the office of prophet or all of our different varieties of intimacy with God, which is what we're going to get to in order to do the prophetic, is to, uh, uh, prophetic ministry is to increase our intimate relationship with God. So union is one thing, communion is another. Life is one thing, ministry is another. Standing is one thing, state is another. Relationship is one thing, serving within the veil is another. So... I, I got saved and I'm, a, and I'm a believer and I'm a Christian, so I, am, I am belong to him, but I'm maybe not qualified to minister because I stopped at that. I just go to church on Sunday, and that's it. And I feel good about myself, but, and, and God still loves me, but he's not able to work his wonders through me because I'm not willing to go that much further because... What deformities and defilements debar many of us from an elevated walk in ministry, which might be ours. And so it's available to us. That's our choice. Okay, so now, oh, you have something. I, I have a question uh, back here on the other page. Okay. <laughs> um, I have a question about Satan. You have every... You, you have where uh, God wants us to live, mm -hmm. and then uh, where everybody else lives there uh, that, that don't believe. And then there's Satan down here at the bottom. It, does he, where, where does he come in? He is, uh, is it like he a function, voice? yes, he functions in the spiritual world. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, when we're, when we're dealing with prophetic things and we ask God to show us a, a picture, we want to make sure that our eyes are on God because the, the Satan will take any advantage to fill our minds with things that are not godly. And he knows the right words so he can make it feel like it's, like it's from God. But that's why we have to learn and know what his voice really sounds like because you'll hear three voices you'll hear god you'll hear yourself okay. and you'll Got hear it. satan okay and so that's why we practice with the journaling because sometimes okay. you'll write something like like uh, joseph said you you if you wrote the answer to your prayer and then you go back and see well let's find a scripture that proves this is from god then you know and then you know from doing that enough times that I know when God's talking and when he's not talking and when it's me. That's what we try to, that's what we strive for. Okay, another question jumping up to what deformities and defilements debar us from that elevated walk in ministry which might be ours. Yes, which might be ours. Which might be, yes. Right. Is that decisions, choices? Uh, it would be choices, it would be, um, it would be lifestyles, it would be attitude, it would be not submitting our will, as, as, as he said. Yeah, okay. Got, okay. Got, got and it would be not believing as well. You have to decide, you know, if you ask God for something, it says that's in the scripture. If you ask him for a fish, he doesn't give you a rock. That's right. You know, so you say, okay, God, I belong to you, and I want to know you deeper, and he wants you to know him more. And so, okay, God, I'm going to believe you say this can be, and you say you will talk to me, and I'm going to believe that that's what you say, and so um, I want to know it. Yeah. And your eyes are focused on, on Jesus. You don't, don't focus on whatever the issue may or may not be. Right. I'm, I'm sitting here trying to think of an, of an instance, and maybe you can think of one, where you felt like the enemy spoke straight when oh. you were trying to give a prophetic... Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Well, just that the enemy can be a good counterfeiter. And I was thinking even in this day and time, the urgent importance of discernment because he's, he can be a good counterfeiter. Yes. And we've seen that insidious, religious, yucky 
caca. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. He, <laughs> Good work. He's, he's not life-giving, and right. he can't create. That's right. Remember, he's called the accuser. That's right. You know, right. and so that's one of the things that we'll do when we develop a prophetic okay. ministry yeah. is we stay on the positive side. Amen. If it God shows you a word for somebody that's not really very positive, that's for you to pray about. That's right. That's not for you to share with that person. Oh, God sees you're doing some sinful thing and you need to stop. That's not, that's not how we're going to, going to function. No. That's just God showed you the secrets of somebody's heart and he doesn't show it to a blabbermouth. That's right. A lot of times God will show us things so that he wants us to pray about it. That's right. Amen. That's good. I have a friend who, who um, she was staying, she, she, I don't know, she was in her 70s or something, Liz. And she was um, living with her children and grandchildren. And this was the day that uh, the space shuttle Columbia crashed. And she was a dreamer. And her daughter came into the room and said, oh, you got to turn on the TV and see what's going on. And they turned it on. She says, I just dreamed that. She says, I saw that in a dream. And she says, I didn't know what it was. And that's one of those things. Dreams are prophetic, too, sometimes. And so what we have to do is, OK, God, now that you've showed me this, what do you want me to do with it? There's always the action. If you're taking the time to show it to me, what do you want me to do? Okay, questions, anything else? <coughs> I was just thinking of her question about, you know, Satan's voice and being reminded that as God speaks, speaks to us in those streams of thoughts, the enemy, it sounds the same as ourselves. It can, yes. Yeah, you know, and I think learning that discernment of writing and finding yes. out are those ungodly beliefs or those, you know, what when you're writing to figure out, okay, starting to recognize it, but it's not a... Hello, I am Satan. You know, I mean, no, it comes to that's us. right. That's doesn't right. He doesn't introduce himself. No. <laughs> He's sneaky. Yes. I know when I agreed to do this that um, I all of a sudden had a lot of accusation in my mind. Yeah. You know, I says, oh, well, you're not really good enough. You haven't played guitar for a long time. You haven't been doing this or whatever it happens to be. And that is the accuser. That's exactly right. Okay, that's exactly what I was going to ask you about, like, negative self-talk. Yeah. Like, when you <clears throat> are going to do something and you don't have confidence or something, you know, you, you hear this little voice like, well, you really can't do that. <laughs> yeah. You know, or, that's exactly you know, right. you really shouldn't be putting yourself out there like that. <gasps> you um, know? That's right to a certain extent. You have to still be able to discern between those voices because it can be the Holy Spirit cautioning as well. Right. well that's but that true. is why when we do this prophetic ministry that we are all in a group here together because it's a safe place that you can try that. It's, you know, you can go and say, well, this is what I think God is telling me. What do you think? And then you can get some guidance. It's not that anybody's going to going to be able to answer that question, yes, no, maybe, but we can say, well, have you thought about it this way, or, or whatever. It gives you some guidance as you learn to, to hear that voice. We had something over here. Okay. And I had somebody one time, I, precious little sweetheart, you all, we, we all know her, um, she, I cannot hear God's voice. I know I can't. And, and she was so in agreement with that yes. lie, yes. Um, she couldn't hear God's voice. She really couldn't. So we have to decide which side are we going to be in agreement Well, that's with. why you have to, um, you tell God, yes, God, I trust you. I'm going to believe you, and we're going to take it at, at the value that you say it is. Yes. Amen. I kind of lost my train of thought on that. Uh -oh. What I was going to ask you from earlier. <laughs> but... Uh, we go by comfort, edification, and exhortation. That's exactly right. That's what we try to operate in. That's in 2 Corinthians 14. Amen. Amen. And then which, what you were saying that we get to practice, the Holy Spirit always runs in alignment. So we know yes. in part, we prophesy in part. That's right. And if we're questioning what we gave, if that was of God or us, by what you hear, the other words, it'll either confirm it, add to it, but yes. it'll be all in the streamline of God's Yes, that's thought. true. And it's, that helps us know also it's true. that when, we're when closer we, to hitting the mark. When we do prophetic team ministry, that's why the team is there. Amen. Because 
each one is sort of half judging whether the, what the next one said is being correct or not. But you also have to understand that when we're given a, uh, a word to somebody, it's up to that recipient to, to realize it. that they have to, to weigh that. That's, that's the spirit bearing witness that, that we talk about sometimes. And a friend of mine always called it, well, you know when you're knower. <laughs> the word for that is epistemology. <laughs> and it's the study of how you know what you know. And it's a lots of big words, and it goes on and on about, you know, philo philo philosophers and, right. I don't know, one of those other P words, not psychiatrists, <laughs> but one of those people. <laughs> yeah, there's one. That's the one. And, and it's a big study is how do you know what you know? Because right. it's not just experience. It's what you believe. I mean, so this is the spirit, for our case, the spirit bears witness. Mm -hmm. So if, if, uh, if I have a dream and I've told you what it is and I need some help kind of find an interpretation, at some point, I'm going to know what it is. You might, you might not be able to tell me, but something that you said there, and all of a sudden, I can't explain how it is that I know, but it's without a doubt that I know. That's the spirit bearing witness. Turning those words into rhema for you, huh? That's right. That's good. That's exactly right. Ministers to the very deep things of the heart, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now the next thing I want to do is I gave you a big chart in your notes. It has lots of numbers on it, and it's about the focus of God. Well, he'll put it up. There you go. Um, <coughs> This, I got to thinking one day quite a while ago, uh, how many times can God see you only? How many times will he focus his 100% attention on you? And mankind has learned in our lifetime, most of us, how to subdivide time into these small things here. So we have seconds, we have minutes and hours, minutes, seconds, and here we start coming down to like a microsecond. And these are some explanations of how that is. Let's grow up just a little. This picosecond, and what I did at the top there was I took 7.6 billion people on the earth as population. And if you take that and do the math with this number, God can focus on you only with 100% of his focus 132 times a second. That's just absurd. To my mind, when is he not looking at me? When is he not talking to me? And then you go on down here to where you get to the, the quantum physics here. It's just, it's just absurd. But God, remember, is outside of time. He created time. So that doesn't mean anything to him, but it means something to us when you think that, well, every second, if there's 7.6 billion people, there's not very many times a second that he can focus. But when you see how, many time, how much man has, science has divided time to where they can actually measure that, then you see a bigger picture of what God's really like. Okay, so the last thing I want to do, this is, this is kind of homework for you. The, the last page there was to write a love letter to God. Go to your quiet place and write a love letter. Write it down and then let him write it back, write back to you his response. It might be the same day, might be the following week, you know, whenever it is. And it's a personal thing. It's not something that I would want to have you share with me your, your heart's desires and, and what you wrote to God and what he wrote back to you. But the experience is important to share. Did you learn something about yourself? I did when I did that the first time. I do it periodically. And it's always amazing to see what I learn about me and what I learn about God. And my perspective, the first time I did it, I write this thing out and I think, oh man, this is a letter of apology. This isn't a love letter. It wasn't until I was finished writing it and I looked back and I said, well, this is not a love letter. This is, I'm sorry for this and forgive me for that. 
that's not a love letter. And so when I put my mind to it and I wrote that, and then I saw what he wrote back to me, I realized that um, I had always viewed God as the man on the throne. He was supreme. You didn't cross him. And what I found out was that he wants to be my friend, and I saw Jesus in a whole different light, that he could stand next to me, that he could sit next to me, that we could walk arm in arm if we wanted to, we could do whatever together. And it was a whole different revelation for me than thinking God was so far away right. instead of right here. So um, if you want, I was going to play and let God sing a love song to you. Think of it prophetically. There's no words for anybody to know about. You just close your eyes or whatever and let the words that, that I sing be God's love song to you. It's a different experience, maybe. <laughs> I'm going to let you fix, fix however okay. it's supposed to go. Okay, so enjoy God's words to you. Hear my voice. Hear. Calling to you, hear my voice, calling your name. You
Come away with me, come and dance your life with me, come and dance with me. Nothing else can take your place To feel the warmth of your embrace Let me draw your heart Closer unto me
you have good experiences with that? <laughs> Did anybody see anything when that was, yes? What'd you see? <laughs> I actually got taken. You smelled roses and you went there. Uh, you were laying on it? That's good. Anyone else? Yes? You had a picture of dancing. Amen. Anyone else? A tomb open. That's fitting for today. <laughs> right? Amen. That's good. I actually went to Israel. I saw the, to the first place I, when I went, I, because um, I, <laughs> that was the most precious time of my life. <laughs> and the Lord remembers. See, the Lord, re- that's what's way precious, because the Lord remembers that even better than I do, and he reminded me right during that. It was precious. That's what you're in for. <laughs> That's, none of us can be let down with that kind of thing, right? When the Lord begins to speak to you, he will never let you down. In fact, he will open up things, greater things than you ever thought or could imagine, right? Because he said that. Let's just close our eyes again. Let's just invite, thank you, Mike, first of all. <laughs> yeah, let's just close our eyes. So, Lord, we just give you permission to speak to us. Lord, thank you. Thank you for tonight. But, Father, I I thank you that we're not, we don't just leave you here. We take you with us. And tonight, when we go home, you get, you have another big opportunity when we sleep to speak to us. So, Father, we ask you, would you continue to speak to us, Lord? Open up your, open up our eyes, open up our ears, open up our our smell, our smell gate, our uh, ability to, to taste the things of heaven. Open up our heart. Open up our senses to you. And Lord, help us to see you and know you better than we've ever known you. Because that's what it's about. That's what the prophetic word is all about. It's all about love. And it's all about relationship. It's all about how we know you how much we love you and how much we can love your people. So Father, we just ask right now that you continue to move. I give you permission. Just say it to yourself. I give you permission, Jesus. I give you permission, Holy Spirit. Do your work in my heart and open up my heart to hear your voice. Open the eyes of my heart so that I can hear you clearly. Father, I just thank you and give you all glory. I love you, Lord. I thank you, God, you're not this God that's far, far away, and you don't care. You're cold. Lord, thank you that you're closer than a brother. You're closer than the air that I breathe. You're closer than my nose on my face. You're right here with me. You're in me. And I thank you, God. No other God is like you. Thank you, Lord. We just give you all glory. You are the living God. You are alive. <laughs> you have you were the one who came and died for me, but Lord, you're alive. Thank you that you are alive and you want to speak to me. You want to speak to all of us. Thank you, God. We just give you all glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right, I'm going to close. I'm just going to bless you. But if you need, if you would like to, us to pray for you, please come up, okay, afterwards. So that may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the eyes of the Lord turn towards you. May you see his eyes this week. Lord, we just ask God right now that we will look up to see your eyes, like Psalm, Psalm, uh, one, or number, Psalm 5 says, we look up to see your eyes. I want to look up and see your eyes. May the Lord lift his countenance upon, upon you, be gracious unto you, and may the shalom of heaven be around you, surround you, May the peace of God 
Lord, right now we invite your healing power into our hearts, into our lives, into our physical bodies, mind and our will and our emotion. Heal our bodies, heal our minds, heal our emotions, heal our will. I command my body to line up with the word of God. I command my thoughts to line up with your word. And I thank you, Father, for the healing power. Send your healing power into me right now. I give you permission. Heal my mind, will, and emotions and my physical body. Command my body, again, line up with the Word of God. Mind, listen to your the one who loves you, the lover of your soul. Will and emotions, line up with the Word of God. Thank you, Father. Lord, I just thank you right now that your love is healing us. What a precious way to be healed with your great love. had the sense that somebody in the room is tormented with um, thoughts, tormented with uh, accusations. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we command the spirit of torment and accusation. You must go. You must bow before Jesus. You must bow. Accusation and terror and um, thoughts of uh, self um, against yourself are not from God ever, ever. So we command the accusations to stop in Jesus' name. You must bow before Jesus. Yes. Amen. We close the door to the liar, to the thief. We say, no, you must stop in Jesus' name. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. Right now, just lift your hands. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. That covers every sin. That covers every wicked thing. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We, we repent of our sin. And we thank you. We just lean heavily upon the blood of Jesus. We lean upon you. We lean upon you and we say we want relationship, our relationship to be deeper. Thank you for calling us, Lord, into relationship with you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you can say it, just say I surrender everything to you, Lord. It's all yours. We just surrender it. I just give it all. My life is yours. Everything, everything I have, everything I do, it's all because of you. And I give it all to you. I lay down my life. I lay down my life. And I say, you take me where you want me to go. You take me. Forgive me, God, where I've, I've said no. Lord, yes, from now on, I want the yes to be in my heart. And I repent for when, the, and when there's been a no. So forgive me. And I say yes. I say yes. It's worth it all to serve you, Lord. The benefits of serving you are so good. I love you. Oh, I love you. 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 Oh, you're the one I love. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, let's just thank the Lord now for his great mercy upon us, his great love for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I give you all glory, all praise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. church in my car. I give you permission to have great church in your car. <laughs> um, there's times I scare myself to death in my car because I'll be yelling so loud that it scares me because it comes back at you from your dashboard. It's so good though. 
I tell you, I've come down 6th Avenue worshiping God so much, I thought I'm not going to make it home. I'm going to fly away. <laughs> but we just, you know, this is what, this is where, this is where you gain relationship when you're by yourself. And you begin to worship in ways you, you, you think, if anybody knew what I was doing, they would think I was crazy. But you do it by yourself. And all of a sudden, you don't care anymore what people see. And when people see that you're praising him and you're just un, unashamed, just like David said, I'll be more undignified. I'll be more undignified than this. You're worth it all. You're worth it all. Thank you, God. But this is where, this is where you build that. And then when something comes along that tries to tempt you away, you go, wait a minute, I'll lose that. I don't want to lose that. When I'm alone with the Lord and when I'm just talking to Him and I'm worshiping Him and I love, I feel the love of heaven, I don't, I don't want to do that because I'll lose this. I want this relationship. And this is what makes the prophetic worth it all <laughs> that's what makes the prophetic powerful is when you have that relationship and you won't give that relationship up for nothing right the closer you get the closer you get to him the, the less all of that other stuff it all goes away you just don't want it anymore and you don't want you will not break this relationship for anything the world has to offer get there that's the goal Nothing else. Nothing else. I love Jesus. He loves me. Therefore, I'm a success. And that's the truth. That's the truth. Listen, get that in your heart. I love Jesus. He loves me. Therefore, I'm a success. That's all it is. If I lose everything, if I lose my life, doesn't matter. I'm a success because I love him. He's worth it all. Loving him is worth it all. There's no other thing. I've told you guys when I go to the mission field, I pack my house like I'm dead, like I'm a dead man. I'm not coming home because it's worth it all. If I go and I leave my life there, that's worth it all because I'm in love with this man and I'm in love with this man and how he operates all over the world. And I want to see what he's going to do in every place on the planet. Every place he'll take me. I'm like, show me what you do there. Well, show me what you do in the bush bush. Show me what you do in the deep parts of India. Show me what you do. Because I want to, and I want to see the people there too. I want to, like, I'm like, how do you operate in these people? Ah, oh, so good. <laughs> it's so good. Let's, let's love the world. Let's love Jesus first so that we can love the world bigger than we ever did. That's what it's all about. And that was the main thing, right? It's all about love. You know, the whole thing of the scriptures in, uh, in, on the prophetic are all in 1 Corinthians. Is it, it starts with uh, 12, 13, and 14. And 13 is the love chapter. If you can't do the love chapter, forget the rest. If you can't do that. Because it's all about the deep love of God. And I'm going to lay my life down for everything, up for Him. Everything, it's all about Him. Right? It's all about that relationship. So I just encourage you, thank you. That was right on. That's the first, that's the number one thing. We build love with love for the, the one we love. And then the prophetic. And then the other gifts. What is it? All of the other gifts. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness. All of those things become more real and more real. I've stood on stage with young, with young people to prophesy over them and stood there and wept. It, it's all I could do to stand there and not completely weep because of how deeply I felt the love of God for this person. It's almost crazy. You stand there and you think, God, am I going to make it through this? Because I feel like I'm going to blow up right now. How am I going to prophesy over this if you have bikes, there's blood and guts everywhere because <laughs> that's how I feel. I love this person so much. That's what we want because that's the love of God. He loves us so much there'd be blood and guts everywhere, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> He's the blood and guts man. <laughs> he shed all his blood and guts for us. Thank you, God, for your great love for us. Thank you for your great love for us. This man... 
this man that loves us so. Oh, we love you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, my friends, I love you and I bless you. I release you. Um, I, uh, we have Passover. Please don't forget to sign up for Passover if you'd like to come. If you want to leave your 20